welcome to Thrive in Design, a podcast about making money and beautiful interiors as it relates to product-based businesses in the interior design industry. Each week, we'll discuss innovative strategies on how to approach product development and design sales in a shifting market. I'm your host, Nicole lachey Ben. Welcome back to another episode of the Thrive and Design podcast. Today, I am thrilled to welcome Reed Palmer, CEO and founder of Hero Flooring, to the show. Reed began his impressive career in the contract floor covering industry 24 years ago, gaining extensive experience across major markets, including Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Miami, Los Angeles, and Las Vegas. In 2008, he founded Sustainable Services, a successful independent rep group in Florida. Building on this success, Reed launched Hero Flooring in 2015. Hero Flooring has quickly become a national brand known for its high-performance floor coverings. The company is dedicated to providing innovative, sustainable, and durable flooring solutions for both residential and commercial spaces. With a focus on quality and performance, Hero flooring products are designed to withstand heavy use while maintaining their aesthetic appeal. Under Reed's leadership, Hero Flooring has established itself as a trusted name in the industry, known for its commitment to excellence and customer satisfaction. We can't wait to dive into Reed's journey and insights, so let's get started. Welcome to the show, Reed. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I always like to start off by just getting even more background about your experience in this wonderful industry in the interior product world. So start by sharing what initially drew you to interior products 24 years ago and how has that journey evolved since? Yeah, no doubt. So I I always tell anyone that asks and also anyone that'll listen that clearly I didn't wake up one day and say, I know exactly what I want to do for my life career and I want it to be selling floor covering products. What I find is if someone, you know, really established in their heads that they want to do that early, it's most often because they have family in the business and they've grown up in it. For me, it was it was not the case. I actually was a collegiate athlete on a rowing scholarship. I was really interested in continuing, you know, rowing career afterwards. I was a, a coach at a university and my assistant coach's neighbor happened to be in the floor covering industry and said to me one day, hey, you should come work with us. And I said, I'm not going to work with you guys selling flooring. I just got out of college. How am I going to tell all my friends I, I sell flooring now? Like for- <laughs> so long and short of it, I did go work for them and begin to learn the industry. And it is one of those industries that once you're in, very few leave. You know, you see reps might move from a, a brand or reps might move even from a, you know, flooring to furniture or furniture to flooring, whatever. But it's an awesome industry. And it's an industry that I am excited to say continues to evolve. And it's also what I saw as the opening for Hero to to say that, hey, this has been done this way forever, but there are new ways to do this and there are new ways to go about it. And it's what really, you know, drove me to start the Hero brand. Yeah. So going back to like recent college grad read, what were your preconceived notions about what flooring could be? <laughs> yeah. So, about- you know, I was petrified that I was going to be standing in some flooring store and, <laughs> you know, selling, selling carpet or something like that, which I'll be honest with you is, is an awesome, awesome avenue. I was always jealous of the residential side of the business because it's much more instant gratification. You can make a sale right away. Somebody walks in, you get a deal done and, and you know that day. My father used to ask me all the time when I was like, you know, 22 in the industry, like, did you sell anything today? And I'd be like, listen, the sales cycle in our industry doesn't work like that. No one walks in and and checks out like it's a grocery store with a product. This takes time. So that was, you know, something I had to get used to as well. But um, everything I thought the industry was, you know, going into it, you know, completely blind to it, I was wrong. It's an incredibly sophisticated industry. It's an incredibly important industry. It's awesome that we touch, you know, aspects of healthcare and education and retail and hospitality and every part of life. And what really drove me to actually take the job I took was I said to myself, and this was, you know, this was back in 1999 now, I said to myself, we're always going to walk on a floor, or at least I was pretty sure of that. We're always going to walk on a floor as long as we're alive. The computer shouldn't change that. Technology shouldn't change that. There's always going to be floor covering. 
And so that really was for me exactly what when I said to myself, okay, let's do this because this is going to be here. This was also during a time that I feel even like right now, you know, that people are like, what jobs that exist today won't be jobs that exist tomorrow because of AI or advancements in technology. And I always felt pretty comfortable that floor covering would be here. So, so far, so good. Yeah, absolutely. And I can totally relate to that. I studied interior design in college and people just had preconceived notions about what that meant. They're like, oh, well, like, can you help me pick out my curtains for my house? Right, like, right. I can, but it's far bigger than that. And right. I remember having like recently or like right after college, somebody asked me like, oh, what did you study? Like, and then I told him interior design. He's like, that's like kind of brushed it off. And yep. I said, every building has an interior. <laughs> so, yeah. And he kind of shut up. So <laughs> I think it's mind boggling for, you know, someone who's not in the industry to mm -hmm. to get a grasp on what interior designers are dealing with. To have to know so much about so many different products, so many different finishes, so many different codes, so many different things from a safety standpoint to think about, it's enormous. And exactly. it's, uh, I, I mean, I give all of the designers a ton of credit yeah. for dealing with it because I just can't imagine. Honestly, I, I pay attention to floor covering. That's my one lane. Yeah. And can't imagine having a second, third, fourth, fifth lane to have to run through. Yeah. So let's talk about markets, especially sure. in the interior products world. Like every major market is different from New York to Las Vegas to even different parts of Florida. You know, sure. getting into those markets as an interior product rep or manufacturer is completely different. And you've done many markets. So how did those diverse experiences across markets kind of shape your approach to product development and sales strategy? Sure. So, you know, when it comes to markets, I would say that there is the politics are local, right? In every single market. And so you have to learn to navigate the politics of every single market. And you also have to learn to navigate the preferences of that market. It's awesome that each market does, you know, feel and look differently. And it's, it's amazing how different the approaches and level of casual versus not casual markets can be. And I've always enjoyed it. I'm the kind of person that really does love the adventure and does love the challenge. And what I've seen in some of the most successful reps in our country is that they basically start in a territory and they stay in that territory for the next 35, 40 years, and they just become an anchor of that market. And I think it's obviously an incredibly smart way to go about the business, and it makes it very easy to manage relationships and, and keep those relationships going. What I found is that getting to work in so many different markets was something that made me really lucky, really fortunate. It allowed me to see all of the different approaches from the different markets. It allowed me to see the different ways of doing things, allowed me to see what works in one market and why that doesn't work in another market. And I think the greatest thing I learned, and I say this all the time for Hero, and it's I, I feel like one of our strong suits is that we are not a company or a brand that takes the approach of that one size fits all. Right. And in our industry, especially with a much, much larger manufacturer, because of efficiencies, because of you know, you know, manufacturing requirements and so on and so forth, it has to be a one size fits all in some respects. Right. Okay. You can't be most often a six billion dollar company and cater to the individual the way that we can cater to an individual because we can stop what we're doing and make a, a jet ski kind of move versus the cruise ship move. And we really pride ourselves on that too. So a big part of Hero and a big part of our approach is taking a very individual approach to each client. When we work with a design firm, we recognize that each designer inside of that design firm is their own unique person and is their own individual that might need to be or want to be catered to a bit differently. So that's how we operate. Yeah, I love that. And so now you're, you know, you founded Hero Flooring back in 2015. And even before that, you had founded Sustainable Services in 2008. Yes. So what inspired your entrepreneurial journey, starting with Sustainable Services? And then yeah. how has that venture paved the way for Hero Flooring today? Yeah, you know, so I don't remember exactly <laughs> what made me say, you know what, I'm doing this on my own. I learned from a lot of great people and yeah. I still learn from a lot of great people. One of my favorite things to do is get into a conversation with someone that I learned from and someone that inspires me. You know, just yesterday I was working with a, a business owner that we're going to actually be working with that had come to us saying they want to sell some of our products. 
But I, I found that just being with them for an hour, you know, it re-energized me and excited me and, and got me moving. But, you know, I was based in Washington, D.C. at the time. And, you know, Florida kind of had my heart in terms of, you know, it's where I grew up and I really wanted to be back in Florida. But to be very honest, I wanted to start my first business. I wanted to start an independent rep group. I felt like I knew how to do it. And I, I told myself this. I said, you know what? If I fail, I know Shaw or Mohawk is going to hire me, right? Yeah. So <laughs> I know I've got something I can fall back on. I had a good track record there. I know they'd be happy to have me back. And, and I, I figured I could do that, right? But so I wanted to start my first rep group. And literally, I was based in Washington, D.C. and knew that Washington, D.C. wasn't an option because I was a brand new, you know, independent rep. The big manufacturers aren't going to sign with you right away. And so I thought about all of the major markets and thought to myself, you know what? I should start in a market that might have a greater opening in terms of needing more awesome reps to come down there and really kick the tires and get things moving. And that's how I ended up packing a U-Haul. Uh, driving all the way to South Florida without stopping, which was probably not safe. What? And uh, <laughs> yeah. And then I sat down at my desk like five days later in my little townhouse that I had rented and said to myself, oh, wow, I think we're having a recession. And that was the start of the Great Recession. Oh, my gosh. And so I literally had just quit my job and left D.C. I was in a market now that no one knew me. So like literally if I called a design firm tomorrow... And I, you know, hi, this is Reed Palmer from Sustainable Surfaces. It was as good as like, yeah, well, you can come in in like three months and here's our policy. And, and I was just like very sobering because I had gone from a market where I could literally walk in the door any day, any time, yeah. what you're doing, let's get coffee, whatever. And you start all over and it is humbling, but it's also, it's a really great lesson in having to start at the basics and respect the chain of command. And it was a great experience. So I feel like the entrepreneurial bug has always been in me. And I would say even today that we were sitting, you know, I have ambitions to continue to do new things and, and grow this business and take it in, in many directions. That's awesome. I love hearing like how people started. Like even if you don't know, like what was that initial thing that yeah, yeah. led you? You did it and then you kept yeah. going. 100%. Though 2008 was a crazy year <laughs> for the economy. And I feel like that is becoming a theme for the people I'm interviewing for this season of the podcast. Like what was happening in 2008 and how did they keep going yeah. to get to where they are now? So that's awesome. Yeah. So now give us a quick elevator pitch of Hero Flooring, because sure. for those of you who don't know, I am a brand ambassador for Hero Flooring and I'm just like getting started with you guys. Yep. Sending you guys designers that can use your amazing flooring. But give my listeners the elevator pitch of what Hero Flooring is all about. And the sure. innovation that you guys have in terms of just like product to start. We'll start there. Sure, sure. So I found a hero flooring in 2015. And it was uh it was a moment where I basically said, you know, I love the independent rep side of the business, but what I was really hungry for was doing it a different way, right? And controlling everything from marketing to geography to being able to play in a much wider space. If you go back to what you had said earlier, I came from so many different markets. And I had awesome contacts in all of these different markets, but the traditional manufacturer would basically say to you, hey, you live in Los Angeles, so your market is Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and that's your little box, and don't get out of your box. And it used to drive me crazy because I would say, but, but I have amazing contacts in Washington, D.C. that would love to work with us, or Florida, or you know wherever, and we, we couldn't work with them. And so I said, well, I'm gonna, I want to work with them, but the only way I can work with everybody is to build a national brand. And we actually started in porcelain tile, which was not the game plan. The game plan that I so had the hunger for was to start in LBT, but I didn't know the first way to start. You know, I didn't, I didn't know any factories. I didn't have the contacts and the, the friends that I had gone to that, you know, was offered to sell us product were making it to a point where it didn't make sense. You know, it was the, the barrier to entry just wasn't favorable. So we started in the porcelain tile business. And I love that side of the business. I feel like it's in some respects disorganized in our industry. And there's so much room to make it easier for clients when it comes to, you know, figure out what they're looking for, get what they need, be fast, be easy, avoid the VE, avoid the import, all these different things. And that's where we started. And then we just grew over time. You know, we, we did get into the LVT business, Factory Direct, which was awesome. We brought in a ton of inventory, which was a learning experience too. We entered the engineered wood space and the turf space, and we entered the rubber space as well. And the rubber space has now grown into us becoming an official Nike Grind partner, 
which is one of the most exciting things about Hero. It's a enormous market differentiator. And in our industry today, I think it's so important to find the market differentiators because there's so much Me Too product out there and there's so much of the same. And I feel like when you go to a design team or an architect today or an end user and say, listen, we'd love to show you something from our company and it is different and it's different for all the good and right reasons. And we think you're going to love what you see. The success rate is really high. And so it's just a really fun time for us right now with that product line. I'm thrilled to be a brand ambassador for Hero Flooring. Hero Flooring was founded in 2014 with a clear focus on creating the ultimate client experience. Hero Flooring is a national brand of high performance floor coverings, which includes carpet tile, Hero rubber and Nike grind tiles, LVT, engineered wood and turf. For more information about Hero Flooring, head to heroflooring.com and tell them Nicole from Thrive and Design sent you. Now, let's get back into this insightful episode. So let's talk about differentiating factors. If people sure. do not know about sure. Hero Flooring and what made me excited about your brand is the differentiating factor, right? I've worked for a wall covering brand, laminate brand, lighting, and a lot of the times in working with those brands, I'm literally going against competition that are excelling the exact same thing. Yes. And yes. they might even be getting it from the exact same factory, just a different. For level. sure. For sure. For sure. <laughs> so what I love about Hero Flooring is like your product innovation, Nike grind, just like all the ways that you guys approach innovation with your product. So tell us more about the Nike grind partnership. What is it? How is it different from anything else when it comes to flooring? Sure. So the Nike Grind program itself has been around for the better part of, I want to say 31 or 32 years now. In the first 30 years of the Nike Grind program, they recycled more than 130 million pounds of recycled Nike Grind product into partner products like ours. As an official Nike Grind partner, we have you know an exclusivity basically to use the Nike Grind products in our space in the contract flooring side of the business. And we basically, you know, share in the story of circularity, which is that you've taken athletic shoes made by Nike and and others, bring them back, you know, bring them out into the market. We all use them. They get returned. There's also product that, you know, gets recycled in-house and they create Nike grind. When they create Nike grind, they're not breaking just the rubber down, but they're taking the fabric, the leather, the metals, the plastics, you name it, every single part of that shoe, which is just so incredible, breaking it down, siloing it into materials that can be used. And then that material, we're proud to say we use the Nike Grind Recycled Rubber in our products. We use different percentages in different products. We use different aggregate sizes in different products, which helps us get different visuals out of the product. But what's also really important to mention about our product, which is also a very big differentiator, is that we have a, an agreement with Nike and a directive as well that we won't use any chrome rubber, which is recycled tires, in our products with Nike Grind at all. And in in initial meetings, when this was like the first, you know, directive that came out, I was actually a little bit nervous. I was nervous of the fact that, you know, what is this going to mean in terms of visual? What is this going to mean in terms of price? Where is the market on this? And and what is the reaction going to be? And I found it to be one of our most massive differentiators. We deliver a product that doesn't smell like tires. We deliver a product that is not tires. We deliver a product that's clean. We deliver a product that I feel fine if my six-year-old son is walking around and touching happens to touch his mouth or something of that nature. And so we've got an awesome product that really delivers in in so many respects. Yeah. And is there, I guess, a directive that you tell designers specifically about like, why not use products that have recycled tires versus using Nike grind? So, you know, I I feel like in our industry and one of the things as a rep and a manufacturer is that it's never our place to tell a designer what to do ever, right? Absolutely. And we respect so much that there are different ways to do things and different ways to go about things. What I've evolved into over time is just that I've seen the massive benefits of the Nike Grind product. We have, I can't tell you how many clients that say that eliminating the tire odor is one of their greatest missions of all time, right? That it's been a problem. Clients might complain about it after the fact. HVA systems, you know, start to run and it's, it really spreads, whatever it might be. We take the approach to educate on the benefits of our product and take the approach to educate on the benefits of of why we go about doing things the way we're doing them. And we've found that to work incredibly, incredibly well. We've had situations where we've learned about our own product from a designer. We were working on one project, which was a a center for children and adults with autism. 
And the designer said to me, I don't know if you know this, but children with autism have a heightened sense of, of smell and mm -hmm. odors can bother them or make them react in a certain way. And myself and one of our VPs looked at each other and said, we had no idea. Oh, yeah. but this is something obviously that's that's great to understand and know as well. But then when you talk about, you know, universities and K through 12 and, and all of these different areas where products like this can and do go, we're really proud of the fact that what we deliver, we have a fully verified and published EPD. We're working on our declared red list free label next. And um, we're excited about the product and really proud of what it is. Awesome. I'm excited to hear all of those amazing selling points. Totally. <laughs> Another thing that I think is really cool about Hero Flooring is that you don't have a traditional sales team, right? Most manufacturers, they either have their internal sales team, which is, you know, location-based, or they work with multi-line reps, which I know that that's something you guys do dabble in. But the main part of your sales model is to have brand ambassadors. So what motivated you to use this unique approach and how has it benefited Hero Flooring? Sure. So, so we do have, you know, some independent agents um, that are multi-line reps and we have some really great ones. And I'm really, really excited and proud about that. And actually just a moment ago was on a Zoom with, with a, a team in a new area that's going to be joining us as well, which we're super excited for. But the big picture with our sales approach really goes back to when I was in college and a product called Red Bull came out. Red Bull came out. None of us knew what Red Bull was. And a friend of mine on the rowing team became a Red Bull brand ambassador. And the way that worked back then is they would get all of these brand ambassadors for Red Bull on college campuses. And essentially all they would do, Red Bull, the company and the distributors, they would drop off like 20, 30 cases of Red Bull at that person's apartment. And that ambassador's job was just to get Red Bull in all of our hands. And it obviously was an incredible grassroots movement and an incredibly smart marketing initiative. When it comes to our industry, what I've seen so much with with sales representation is that so often the sales territories are so massive that it makes it really hard to connect with the base of that market, right? I think that the most successful reps, and they would probably tell you, they have their specific core that drives the majority of their business. And then there are the anomaly reps who have a much, much more spread out you know, client base. But I think if you really look at success in our industry on the representation side, it's a very, very significant core group of business for each rep that that drives business. What we also found is, and I know, is that friends love working with friends. Right. And so what I found myself in is the most successful I've been in the industry was with basically clients that became friends, you know, and, and because it, it took that whole sales rep, designer, almost like student teacher, <laughs> that weird relationship, like when you're in elementary school and you see right. your teacher out for the first time ever, you're like, oh my gosh, this person does stuff that's normal. So it's like, I feel like if we can humanize mm -hmm. the experience of sales, that it's more enjoyable for the sales rep, it's more, and the brand ambassador in this case, it's more enjoyable for the designer or end user because you're not so much being sold to, you're much more being shown something that might be important and helpful to you. And so I just love the brand ambassador program. Our goal is to have more than 200 brand ambassadors on board by the end of next year. And we're well on our way right now to uh, to building a great brand ambassador program. And we also don't have borders to that. So, you know, if, if you, Nicole, had some amazing contact in San Diego that just loves to work with Nicole, yeah. that's the perfect example of someone that you should reach out to because your friend would love to work with you. And so- it harnesses the the talent in the industry and it takes a fresh approach to the business. You know, we'll see how right we are or, or how wrong we are, but I love what I'm seeing so far. I love the approach and we're excited to have that hybrid model. Awesome. I love that. Another part of your innovation is just when it comes to marketing strategies, as you know and have heard on this podcast, I'm always talking about innovation and how product manufacturers can really just be thinking outside of the box and not your traditional like here's this binder to put in your library. Of course, we still need those, but we need something that is memorable for a designer to be like, huh, you know, what's this all about? You know, let me take a peek at this new product that I'd never sure. heard of before. So tell us more about what you're doing in terms of innovation for your marketing materials to get designers excited about your brand. Sure. You know, I think for us, um, and it goes back to when I first started the business in 2015, 
When I started Hero in 2015, I knew I had to move really, really fast because I was currently a multi-line rep. And I was pretty sure that as soon as my line started to get wind that I was starting a brand, they would be knocking me down and saying, yeah. I thought to myself, how am I going to possibly you know, do this and be up and running in time? And what was really awesome, by the way, was that there was such a, um, a respect between myself and so many suppliers that I worked with that they didn't ask us to leave as multi-line reps. They asked us to stay. And we always respected the chain that, you know, if their product line was the one that was the right product line or that somebody had called for originally, we always stayed that course. But I still knew, knew we needed to move really quickly. And so what I said to myself was, I need designers that order a sample from me to help me market with in their office. Yeah. And it's got to spread virally for me in the office. So I need four designers in that office who didn't get that package to look at that package and say, that is so cool. Where did you get that? I want that. And, you know, sending a carpet sample or sending a rubber sample or sending a tile sample is probably not going to get that reaction. Right. Um, and so we started an incredibly cool swag program. We have our own clothing line. We make our own clothing in house on a daily basis with clients' logos. We create a, a ton of different swag items that really surprise the client. And that's a really fun part of working with Hero that when a client gets a package from us, it's a unique client experience, unlike, you know, with any other company. And we mm -hmm. do put a lot of investment into making that happen. When it comes to sales tools, you know, we do have architect folders for like the Nike program, our carpet program, all of those different things. I feel like those are non-negotiables. You've got to have that. But my favorite sales tool on the on the Nike rubber side is we have a uh, Hero Rubber with Nike Grind mini shoebox. And it looks like a Nike shoebox in a sense. And it has the little swatches in there. And, you know, designers can keep that on their desk. And that's a really fun piece for us and a great marketing tool. But I would say from a from an innovation standpoint, from a marketing standpoint, we really put a ton of effort into that. I feel like marketing is everything. The longer that we can have somebody think about us and remember us, the more mileage we get out of any touch point interaction. So our marketing is definitely an enormous, enormous focus for how we gain attention and how we're going to learn. Yeah. And you said some many important things there. One, you're curating a package that is sent to that designer that's like almost like personalized sure. or has this brand story that ties back to your product. And from there, from that such point, it's making it go viral within that office. Like, so that people could come over to their yeah. desk and be like, oh, what is that? And have the conversation going to reach back out to you guys to start the conversation about their project and thus yep. specify the flooring. Epic. But not a lot of brands are doing that. So I just wanted to yeah. take a moment. <laughs> Angry, to yeah, it's a, it's a really big part of the <laughs> approach. There's no question. And it is all about the individual. You know, I try to know, you know, who we're working with as much as I can on a daily basis, right? You know, we were on Material Bank, for example. You may or may not believe it, but every single morning, the first thing I do in the morning is I send a very brief thank you to each individual client that orders from us on Material Bank, just to let them know, see it. Let them know that they have access to me as well. And we certainly want them to know that they're an individual within our, our business model and we're there to help them. But I think it is all about catering to the individual. And I think that that's very unique right now. And from an efficiency standpoint, we can do that. Absolutely. I love it. All right. So tell us what's next in the product development pipeline for Hero Flooring. Is there anything exciting that we can look forward to? Yeah, 100%. So I would say, you know, just now, literally like this last week, we introduced a brand new product from the Hero Rubber uh, with Nike Grind program. It's called 90. The number 90 is essentially what we're talking about here. And it's called 90 because this product is 90% Nike Grind by weight. So a square foot of eight millimeter thickness material, for example, weighs 1.25 pounds per square foot. Of that, 1.12 pounds is Nike Grind recycled rubber from athletic shoes. Yeah. Um, we can even take it a step further and break it down to the fact that in every square foot of material that's eight millimeters thick, it represents the rubber from five athletic shoes that's recycled into the oh, product. Wow. Okay. You get that really start to quantify exactly what you're playing with here. It's got a really you know unique, clean look to it. It takes us to that place where we can say, hey, you want you know incredibly high levels of recycled content for a number of different initiatives you might be working with. You want a high performance product. You want a product that doesn't have the odor of the tires. You want something that's clean. We've got a great product for you. We've just introduced the product. It's our first product also that's prepackaged in cartons that can be bought by the consumer. That'll be an entirely new avenue for us as well. 
But in the first, I would say the first week of launch, probably even pre-launch, we specified really nice size gyms in Chicago. We signed on with a uh, retailer that's actually going to be selling in store in 20 different locations. And it's just really been one of the fastest adoptions of product that I've seen in quite a long time. So we're very excited about 90 and the new introduction. That's huge. That's exciting. For sure. Yeah. So lastly, what advice would you give aspiring entrepreneurs looking to make their mark in the flooring and or interior product industry? Sure. You know what? I would say that first of all, there's a lot of room for entrepreneurs in our industry because there's not so many on the smaller scale that are playing ball and that take the shot at it. And I feel like there are so many things that we're yet to see and, and learn and approaches that can that can come at this a totally different way. I would say for any entrepreneur or anyone that has that spirit, have a good you know mentor, have someone that you can lean on because it's not easy and, and it's a roller coaster. But have a good mentor, have a good backbone that can help and guide you um, and that's been successful and learn from them all you can and listen to them and but also make some of your own decisions and don't be afraid don't be afraid to fail. I've seen so many times and I, I see quotes about it all the time that you know failure can be the best teacher. And so uh, I would say uh, just go into things eyes wide open, find your differentiator, make sure you have a differentiator and go for it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Reed, it has been such a pleasure having you on the podcast. You shared everything from your journey, getting started in the industry where you were a little skeptical, like, what is, <laughs> why am I about to sell some glory? <laughs> right, right. Now, you know, founding and leading this amazing, innovative brand, Hero Flooring. So thank you so much for sharing your journey and so many insights about innovation. Totally. I appreciate it. And, and huge congratulations to you too. I listened to your podcast when I first learned of you and I was really, really impressed. I think you were on the Next Gen podcast and I loved it. And you keep going too and you keep doing your thing because you've got something great going on as well. And we're really excited to have you as a brand ambassador as well. So we appreciate you joining us. All right. Thanks so much, Reed. All right. Take care. Thanks for joining us this week on Thrive in Design. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Thrive in Design. And for more strategies on how your product company can innovate in the interior design industry, head to training.thriveindesign.co. As always, subscribe to the show to catch every new episode and leave us a review so we can continue to create captivating content. See you next week. Thank you.